Now tuning in to Earbud Media, audio for everyone. When we sync up, it's just amazing. <laughs> In all senses of the word. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's lovely and great. Thank you. Cody, do you want to reintroduce yourself now that oh you're a completely god. different person? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was worried we were gonna bring this up on the podcast. I just I just wanted to do a seamless rebrand, but I can't. I can't. No. <laughs> but, he- hi, have you met me? <laughs> Nothing goes uncovered. <laughs> I, I've changed everything. I'm a, I'm a new man. <laughs> Literally, who are they? <laughs> so no. Because I hated Cody Captures, and, and it's over. I'm over. It's over. I'm diked as I mean, course. it's about time, <laughs> It's right? about fucking time. Literally, as soon as it happened, though, I got someone who <laughs> not, like, added me on Twitter or, like, messaged me or something, went to my personal website and went into my contact form... <laughs> And wrote a strongly worded letter about how I can't use dyke because I'm non-binary and trans. So that was a great time for me. Holy shit. Yeah, it was was like a level of dedication I was not expecting. But, you know, cis lesbians never fail to surprise me. So, hey. (laughs) Oh my god. That's a whole... Well, I mean, more clicks for your website, I guess. I fucking (laughs) guess, right? I'm like, damn. Getting my money's worth, I fucking guess. Jeez. I've never gotten one of those things, at least for my for my website before. But it comes as like a oh, email that definitely looks like spam. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not. Oh gonna, my god! I, it was like Cody Captures attention or like CodyCorel.com attention blah blah blah. And I was like, okay, let me test the face and click on this and hope I don't get a virus. And then it was that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, so you got a virus? <laughs> basically, that's what I'm saying. How are you? Uh, oh my gosh, I'm great. We don't have to worry about dogs wow. anymore R. for a while. So that's but not great. that. Sorry, that made it seem like the dogs are dead. They're not oh dead. My God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just back in my home base. Things are good. I think I slept for like 25 hours last <laughs> night because <laughs> working with middle school and high schoolers is exhausting. Yeah, I bet. Um, Especially on the last day before a holiday break when (laughs) they're just hyped up on all the sugar that teachers are giving them (laughs) to try and just make the day go by faster. The one thing that I wanted to ask you, because it's been on my mind the past couple hours that I've been awake, uh, (laughs) is what is your most memorable or embarrassing movie theater experience from your adolescence? Oh, boy. Don't tell me you don't have one, because I know that's a lie. No, I know. <laughs> I Okay, so this is going to paint me as a criminal, and I just want to say that I'm not a criminal. <laughs> I have one that's going to paint me as a criminal, too. Okay, I'm so. glad we're on the same boat. When I was um, earlier than the age of 13, I liked to sneak into R-rated movies, and I great. I had a great system of doing it. There was this really big movie theater near my school, Ooh. and it was like right next to it, so we'd always like go right after like it was in the area. I would always... P- go to like a really popular movie that was not PG-13 and then get that ticket and get fucking in and then just you can like walk around and go wherever you want basically inside as long as it's in that same like as long as you pass the check through like hey you're going in this like direction or whatever and so right. I did that all the time and so one time I don't remember what movie I was trying to see the movie ticket that I bought was for a show that was downstairs so this mm-hmm. movie theater, there's like upstairs is like everything. It's got like a billion theaters. It's got everything that's hot and happening. And then downstairs, <laughs> there's like two theaters. So and okay. I got stuck downstairs at the two theater one. Sure. And it was this fucking I I need to look this up, but it was this fucking movie with like Tom Hanks, which love of my life, but it was not what I was expecting at all. It was very much sure. like this coming of age, like how to deal with, like, being in your midlife crisis and, like, all these things. And I was like, what the fuck? I just wanted to watch, like, zombies or something. This is boring. And I was so mad because I was like, I fucked myself over. Now I have to watch this fucking movie because I can't go upstairs and watch the other good movies. Huh. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wonder what movie you're talking about. I know. I need to look it up. I can, hold up. While you're telling your story, I can look it up. So I have two that come to mind that are incredibly embarrassing <laughs> to my personality. They were both in middle school. One that was the first and only time that I snuck into a movie, and it was disastrous. <laughs> it was with a group of my youth. It was during the summer, I remember that distinctly, when we tried to sneak into Saw 3, Saw 4. Okay. And it was definitely during the summer because the movie theater was like almost empty. (laughs) And I was following along with two of my friends and I had never done it before. They had. And it was a complete disaster because of the fact that the theater was almost empty. And so the the movie theater attendant like knew. <laughs> and so it, I remember the the guy just like looking at my friends and we were like, we got a blast. <laughs> um, so that went poorly. And also I didn't like the Saw movies. Did you find it? Oh, yes. So what was it? Um, it was called Larry Crown. <laughs> <laughs> it is starring Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts. Wow. It's got a 35 on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. And it's not a good movie. And definitely not what I was expecting. And I think That's what I'm shame. trying to, what I wanted to watch, from what I'm looking at for the movies that came out, I think I wanted to see Bad Teacher. <laughs> oh my god. That's the only thing that makes sense to me out of all of these lists. I think I really wanted wow. to see Bad Teacher. I think I eventually saw that in theaters because I was a fucking delinquent. But... <laughs> That's a shame because Tom Hanks and Julie Roberts is like a star set of cats. Right, it's great, but it was just like this really weird, and I'm sure, listen, it's been a hot minute since I've seen it and I haven't, you know, had the same level of like film criticism that I do now, but, so maybe I can give it a better shot, but it just didn't seem very good <laughs> when I was watching it. Great. Okay, so the most embarrassing one Please for God. me um, was when I was with my mom and my best friend at the time <laughs> we went to go see chicken little oh my theaters. god yes oh <laughs> uh, god and um you girls started crying in the movie <laughs> <laughs> um sorry my best we can't friend... we can't talk about twilight today this is the whole podcast now <laughs> you have to tell me every all of your feelings about watching chicken little for the first time um, and sobbing in the theater <laughs> My friend looked over at me at one point, and I I don't even remember what part it was. All I remember is my friend looking over at me and being like, and started laughing because she was like, "Are you crying?" And I was like, "No, no, 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 no." <laughs> and my mom being like, "It's not a big deal. Sometimes movies are emotional." I was like, "Shut up, mom." <laughs> It was literally the worst thing that's ever... No, the second worst thing, because in middle school also was the fucking uh, whoopee cushion fiasco. That was the most embarrassing thing. (laughs) Listen, middle school was hell. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, listen, if you had, like, a successful or non-embarrassing middle school, you are a robot. That's the facts. I don't make the rules. Yeah, agreed. Sometimes... Your girl gets emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I need to rewatch. I've I've literally never watched Chicken Little again because. Whoa! No, it's a great flick. You got- <laughs> All I can think about now is the Chicken Little Vine, and it haunts me sometimes. Oh my so <laughs> that's fair. Oh my god! Uh, just let us know what movies you know embarrass you <laughs> if it wasn't for like copyright i would definitely have us do a live stream where we just watch chicken little <laughs> oh my god no <laughs> uh, uh, but now i cry in movies all the time and it's fine it's no big deal great great so let's chat about some current events that are happening because we've got a certain our pets that's a little emo this week too my son <laughs> my emo son <laughs> he is recounting Harry Potter this yep. week and how it stopped him from living his university life. Yeah. Which is great. Also, this photo with some side chin is <laughs> a lot. Yeah. God, his eyebrows are so good. Like, it's ridiculous how good his eyebrows Agreed. are. Agreed. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot for me to handle. This article, which is written by a one Nick Riley, starts off with R.I.P. Cedric, <laughs> which, like, excuse you. <laughs> A little bit of a misleading subhead, I think. (laughs) Agreed. So, Arpats is revealing 
in this article that because of his filming in this that he was unable to go to school and live his uni dreams it's because of the fact that the filming went over schedule aka he was scheduled for like four months or so but it actually went like a calendar year (laughs) and this poor kid at the time was on set every day all alone (laughs) at like 17 just hanging out (laughs) and chilling but he only worked for like a couple weeks of that time baby yeah (laughs) so bad it says that he was the only one who wasn't in school at that time so he was just quote hanging about (laughs) which i just feel bad well but to be fair We've all seen skins. It looks like they don't do a lot of learning (laughs) at university. But hey, he's going to be okay. I believe in him. Yeah. Yeah. It also mentions in the article that he hasn't seen Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Damn. So you would think like with his credentials. Right. But it says that he wants to. And like he could just walk in. Like he doesn't need to get a (laughs) ticket. He doesn't doesn't need to do the lottery like everyone else, man. Like just fucking go. Do you You know who I am? You could do the show. I am Cedric Dickery. Like I don't. (laughs) Yeah. For real though. Like honestly. On a lighter note. No, we have another J14 piece oh, this boy. week. <laughs> this one I wrote, so you're welcome. <laughs> you can't um, say that because people are going to think that's true. No, no. Okay, Jennifer Maldonado wrote this one for J14. It's titled Perfect Piece of Forever. There's no reason why you should be ashamed to be a Twilight fan. And I mean, that title is basically this entire this is the article. whole piece, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it goes on for... It's more gift than know. text. <laughs> It is more gift than text. It is probably, I don't know, a solid 800,000 words of just (laughs) telling you to live your truth uh, and to not be ashamed. Yeah, Um, it's fair. Yeah, it's great. I I love it wholeheartedly because of the fact that I wrote it. I just didn't get the publishing credit for it. (laughs) And that's fine. (laughs) That's fine. Um, I will say, it seems like you work at J14 because... Also, this, like, email sign-up list is, was written by you. <laughs> uh, yes. All fangirls it, welcome. Get our newsletter and obsess the way you want to obsess. A.K.A. a lot. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> like, you wrote that. I did. Yeah. <laughs> A.K.A. a lot is my... And that's on my business card, so... Sorry, hold on. I... Listen, it's, hey. been, a, it's been a while since I've been on J14.com. Um... <laughs> In a typical uh, publication or a web digital website, there's like little tabs next to the logo of like news or like current events or like media. These ones are Agreed. Selena Gomez, One Direction, Justin Bieber, Disney Channel, which I mean makes sense for sure. But like, wow, they've had those for the past like year since we started this podcast, which hi, when you're listening to this, it will have been a year since we started the podcast. Which, hey, like, hey. Wow, that's wild. They, so yeah, they've had these tabs for about a year, <laughs> which a year ago, those were not really relevant. But no, it seems to have Selena, come full circle a little bit. That's what I'm seeing. It's kind of prophetic, right? Yeah, Because sure. the fact that Selena and Justin are back together. Yeah. Um, and then all the One Direction wow, boys are doing think, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did not think that we'd be talking about Jelena <laughs> on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so maybe J14 is like... I think J14 is God. Like, Holy shit. Hot takes <laughs> on Into the Twilight. <laughs> Into the future, am I right? Oh my god. Uh, I saw a headline, sorry, this is gonna be a, a little bit of a please. Dive it before we go, but I saw a 538 headline the other day that was like, it was about like the statistics of game shows and how they're like wild and shit. What if God were a giant game of Plinko? <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I love Plinko so much. Yeah, no, I will, I will forward you this article. Because it's great. What but, if God were one of us, you know? Hey. 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 It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, boys. Play, 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 play. Our last one for this week, because it's been a slow news week, my pals. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Is a case to hashtag thankful article, which is timely for this week, because it's Thanksgiving, I guess. I don't know, man. Sure. Yeah. Also, I don't know. Happy Thanksgiving, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> we hyped it up so much last week, and now you're like, meh, fuck it. I don't know, man. This is my least favorite holiday, so. Ugh, Allie, I need you to see the light. Fuck, man. I don't know. I can have, I can make myself mashed potatoes any goddamn day I want. But do you? Yes. Ugh, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get there, I guess. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, anyway. On, on the side thought, is a think piece written in Thanksgiving time a think piece? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> also, when you said side thought, I definitely did not think of side T-H-O-U-T. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. Okay, so this article is about Kristen Stewart and says she's grateful for the Twilight series, Ellipses, which saw her date Robert Pattinson at the time. This is the longest freaking yeah, article not great. that I've ever seen in my entire life. Anyway, the... Also, this was... This didn't even... They did by DailyMail.com reporter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this Did poor... you write this? <laughs> Is this you going off the record? <laughs> Listen, sometimes I don't want credit, you know? <laughs> That's fine. I just clicked through because the... It the is Daily hyperlinked, Reporter, yeah. <laughs> it's hyperlinked. I've written a lot of articles for this. <laughs> is there just you know? like a ghost reporter that's writing <laughs> It says page one of 700. So <laughs> I've written a lot of 35, articles. 35,000 results. Who is this ghost? Who is this ghost? Maybe it's a bot. Like, they're just putting words together in an algorithm. Right, that's fair. Holy shit. Um, That's ridiculous. So, yeah. Okay, anyway. Kesu says the the Twilight film saga. That's a weird... They could have just said the Twilight saga film. Whatever. Okay, yeah, maybe it is a bot. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's made her who she is. Mm -hmm. So, great. That's basically the whole article. (laughs) Yeah. I just clicked through this for the photos. Yeah, and they're great photos, so. (laughs) One of the quotes that I love about this a lot is, I quote, I used to be treated like a baby bird that needed to be protected from the outside world, and I hated that. Wow. Uh, Wow. Case do, actual baby bird. (laughs) Real life baby bird. Which is messed up because I don't like birds, but I like case do. So where does that leave me? How many times are you going to bring up your hatred for birds in this podcast? Every episode. (laughs) As many times as I can. Maybe that's why I don't like Thanksgiving, you know? The bird. Breaking bird part two, you know what I mean? (laughs) Breaking bird Bird sounds more like a Breaking Bad (laughs) um, parody than a Breaking Dawn parody. I mean, you're right. Bird Dawn. What? (laughs) It's too early for this. We do have a couple of questions. Yeah. And here's the thing. We don't read the names. (laughs) <laughs> right however <laughs> however it's not reading the name yeah if i just say hey there vamps it's me you bird right <laughs> yeah that's good that's a good cover okay. up so this question is do you think that the issues with the way bella and edward's relationship is written would be more forgiven by the general public if edward was a girl and bella was a boy hmm. discuss it feels like this was answered in like the new book that came out in a in a That's sense. Literally, what I was gonna say. Right, because gender is fake and nothing is real. Literally. Yeah. So whatever. However, I I don't know how I feel about this sentence. As a question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because I feel like there's a lot of books that kind of do gross things and get away with it. Yeah. Because of the fact that the protagonist is. A woman. Yeah. I still can't say that. No, it's you're been a whole year. Hey, no, you're doing great. You're doing... Thanks. <laughs> it's a slow process. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! No, I agree. Um, I think that um, oftentimes being, like, the quirky young uh, female protagonist kind of leads to a lot of bad behavior that kind of goes unexcused or justified. Yes. If it, Probably if it was given to, like, a dude protagonist, it would have been like, hey, man, that's not great agreed yeah i think that this will be this will definitely be something that we touch on when we get to life and death Mm -hmm. for sure next question do we think that rosalie is a pro-lifer oh fuck so i think that this is kind of addressed more in the chapters that we read for this week but i think that she's just in it for the babe like i think that her sole motivation is just the baby yeah and that's it like she doesn't really care about Bella. No. She doesn't care about anybody else. She just is making sure that Bella as a vessel 
<laughs> like is fine because she wants to make sure that the child is fine. But pro-life in general and not just Bella in context, huh? Right, this seems like a very extraneous circumstance <laughs> and something that probably doesn't right. happen um, all the time. So probably her judgment's a little bit different because there's not a lot of times right. where vampire babies are being born and she wants them. Whereas I think in the regular world, she'll probably be like, yeah, do See, whatever the I fuck you want, I guess. Where she has like a maternal instinct, I don't think she might, you know, Yeah, I feel like, mothers. I don't know. See, I don't think that she would be... I mean, I know that, like, she was born in a time where that was probably the common assumption. Right. But given what happened Mm -hmm. to her, I feel like she would definitely lean more pro-choice. You know? Yeah. Agreed. So, I think in this context, she's pro-life because something's in it for her. And that's what's kind of coloring her vision. That's an interesting question I hadn't thought about for her. Yeah. thus far. Fascinating. I love those kinds of questions. Wow. Should we chat about chapter 13? These were kind of filler chapters, and that's fucked up. They really were. we just had filler chapters. I know. Are we not over? God damn it, Steph. I know. L- like, I just want to lovingly shake you a little bit, you know? Just shake you enough so that the good words come out, you know? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that that's being said during NaNoWriMo, you know? You know what's fucked up? Wasn't Fifty Shades written during NaNoWriMo? <laughs> it's a holiday, That's everyone. <laughs> fucked up. You know what? Something should stay unwritten. You know what? Natasha... Natasha Benningfield <laughs> <laughs> Natasha Benningfield said it best, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that gospel. <laughs> okay, chapter 13. Good thing I've got a strong stomach. Where we left off last time, Bella was drinking that good blood, or she was gonna get ready to drink that good blood. Jacob is still like, bleh. And Jacob is still like astonished, right? Because he doesn't (laughs) truly understand the depths of the Cullen's house. He's like shook because he thinks like they've got a fridge full of blood and he's unsure what else is happening here. Like they have a torture chamber, do they have a coffin room? And this is where I was curious if this is where E.L. James got her start of like the torture chamber. Hey, 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 oh hey. Oh, God. Anyway. It's like, that was the moment she was I'm like, four books in, she was like, I can make this about sex. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Bella looks over at Jacob and is like, so was this your idea about drinking blood? And she says it kind of loudly, forgetting that Jacob has like supersonic hearing, which I thought was cute. <laughs> and Jacob thought it was cute, too. And... <laughs> Jacob, like, laughs, but it comes out as, like, a bark. So I'm just imagining (laughs) Jacob just, like, screech barking in this quiet room, which is annoying but hilarious at the same time. And Bella, being the good hostess while dying, as she is, is like, you could just go. Like, you don't have to watch me drink down blood. But Jacob realizes that he could just go out and take a nap but then miss her dying. And he's like, no, 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 no. My wife? No. Like, that's not going to happen. Absolutely not. So then we find out that Bella doesn't know that Leah joined in on the pack. Mm. And this is when I find out that there's a good name for Jacob's crew, which is Jacob and the Clearwaters, which sounds like... Which sounds a lot like Josie and the Pussycat. Yeah. And I was just like, Or like Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, them all doing like a Ah! doo-wop kind of thing. I love Um, it. I love it. Very good band name. Very good. Bella is still very scared of (laughs) Leah, (laughs) even though she's like on her deathbed, which is very consistent with her character. But I'm like, Bella, you have a few more things to worry about. (laughs) There's a couple (laughs) other things. You should put in priority here. Yeah. Yeah. Leah's not going to waste her time when you're already a few seconds from death. Yeah. So anyway, Bella drinks down this blood, which during this conversation, Edward had been like, not a clear cup because Rosalie had been like, yeah, 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 just, you know, a clear cup to put it in a shot glass. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they come out with a, like an opaque plastic cup with a, a fucking, a straw, like a bendy straw for it, which <laughs> perfect. Great. Love it, it was a mood and a half. It yeah. wasn't the diva cup that I was expecting and or hoping for, but... This is a very good... (laughs) 
Well, is, is she needed a, a little bit more support. She couldn't just shotgun it. For in that sure. Moment. No, no. That's that's more of like a ginger shot. Like that's definitely not like a full like, kind of situation. Jesus more Christ. when you gotta like revitalize in the morning, not when you need to like you know not be dead. Oh my god, I cannot. I just I can't believe how much you don't like talking about blood, and yet we have a podcast about vampires. It's gonna happen, Ali. We're gonna talk about <clears throat> Listen, it. Listen, this chapter was really hard for me to read. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. The fact that I'm getting through this with a somewhat normal cadence, you all should be thankful. When Rosalie suggests, like, plugging your nose, I also read this plugging my nose. I'm just saying. So, here's the thing. (laughs) Bella puts a straw on her lips and just goes at it. And she says that it feels good (laughs) and tastes good to drink this. And I was like, listen, I'm out. (laughs) I can't. I'm gone. I'm out of here. Farewell. And she doesn't feel nauseous, which, like, there's fucking one of us because <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here reading this with one eye open. Uh, <laughs> Head over the toilet, just waiting. <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm about two and a half seconds from Yardson in this. I don't know how Stephanie got through it, but, ma- I mean, listen, Stephanie has some weird stuff going on, so maybe she's, like, into it. I don't know. The only thing that Bella can worry about during all of this is her record as a vampire Mm -hmm. and that that's a lot for me to worry about yeah (laughs) so during all of this edward and jacob are having this like whispered conversation and one cute second of all that's a lot because (laughs) edward you should be talking and worrying about your wife in this moment but he can't help multitasking because he's such a freaking Gemini which I mean honestly that's a mood so I get it but anyway he's just like lying to Belle he's like oh no 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 just talking to myself it's no big deal (laughs) don't worry it's fine it's yeah it's fine Bella gets (laughs) another cup of blood (laughs) and uh during all this Jacob is pretending that he's the quote court jester (laughs) and is like making weird like jokes during all this but anyway the next thing though is that during all this bella's color is returning to her because she's drinking blood (laughs) and (laughs) don't forget that please because i will never forget it if there's one thing you hold on to before this podcast is over bella is drinking human blood (laughs) yes it's blood just don't forget it (laughs) it's just i can't i will never forget it i can't wait Um, for when we're rich and famous for someone to make a super cut of all the times we say blood in this podcast. Oh, man. And it to go into, like, a Kotex commercial or something. Fuck. Like, it, but it's, like, juxtaposed with all the, like, blue fluid that right? we yeah. use. <laughs> during all of this, Rosalie is, like, completely unamused with Jacob. Because don't forget during all of this, Rosalie and Jacob are, like, two seconds from fighting. Because during all this, it's been, like, five chapters. But within their timeline, it's been, like, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Because, I don't know, time is a social construct, I guess. Sure, yeah. Um, Anyway, so now that Bella is, like, sort of getting better and her heartbeat is getting a little bit better because of the blood, (laughs) Bella is concerned about Jake because he hasn't slept. Because I think it was two chapters ago um leah arrived he had just gotten ready to sleep so jake hasn't slept <laughs> in like a couple of forevers yeah sure. so anyway he needs to sleep that's important to remember during all this people are worrying about bella getting some real food because she's just had two cups of blood and they don't want to pump her full of too much even though rosalie's like yes more blood Carlisle, on the other hand, is like, she should probably get some real food because she is actually human. Sure. And when they ask her what she wants, she says eggs because it's that (sighs) honeymoon (sighs) thing. And Bella fucks with some eggs. And also, like, still very pregnant. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. She started eating eggs, I don't, what was that, like, two weeks ago? I, listen, what the fuck is this timeline? anymore yeah like how the fuck what yeah exactly they send jacob off to go sleep um and he tells edward to get her a blanket because she's still freezing so he leaves and we find out that seth is worried about 
some of the rowdy boys, aka the other pack, is coming in. And it looks like three or four of them are coming in. So he's like, fuck, of course I can't sleep now. Just like last time, there's more of the wolves coming in. Poor Jacob. The only time. It's like my Jacob, again, he just wants to sleep. He's just a 16-year-old boy who needs to sleep. During all this, they get there and we find out that it's Jared... Paul, Quill, and then Colin, who Colin has been like in the background of this book, but like we don't really know him. Right. He's just like a 14 year old who just like recently faced. He's like nobody, but (laughs) it's fine. They get there and we're like prepared for something to go down, but nothing really goes down. It's just like supposed to be drama, but as we mentioned before, filler chapter yeah it's not really that big of a deal yeah. the important thing matters. to remember about, <laughs> none of this matters yeah the important thing to remember is that sam didn't come yeah but Ooh. the sad thing is yeah the sad thing to remember is that quill is there and it's like eh, because <laughs> jacob and quill my babe the important thing though and jacob has been kind of wondering this as they get there is that colin came instead of Embry. And he's kind of wondering this throughout all of it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they have this like, Ram, you should come over to the dark side. And (laughs) Jacob's like, "Uh, obviously not. And it just goes on for like a lot of it. There's lots of italics. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't, it's a lot of filler. I don't know. Do you find anything of import here? Not really. (laughs) Just a lot of wolf boy drama. Yeah. At some point, Jacob sends Leah off Mm -hmm. to run the perimeter to make sure that none of the other wolves are going to attack the Cullen's house. They don't because Leah comes back. Once she does, Jacob phases into being a human so that he can actually talk (laughs) with Jared. Yeah. And they kind of settle things jared's like well seth and leah should be able to come home and see their mom and jacob's like well obviously i'm not holding them hostage uh (laughs) and jared makes a plea to leah to let her know like sam really misses you and leah like almost bites his throat (laughs) off which lets him know like okay all right i got it so we kind of get it nothing really changes there but as they leave quill kind of like whines at jacob to let him know that like he's super sad which lets jacob know kind of why Embry isn't there Mm. and he figures out what's going on he lets seth know like if quill is that upset that jacob's gone and he has claire that means that Embry, who doesn't have someone that he's imprinted on would have wanted to join his pack Mm. and that's basically the summary of why this conversation happened and that's where the chapter ends Yep. Chapter 14. (sighs) You know things are bad when you feel guilty for being rude to vampires. Uh, The longest chapter name ever. Agreed. Jacob goes back to the house, lets them know that everything is fine, because Edward obviously heard that there were other wolves around. Yeah. As he gets there, there are clothes on the porch, and Jacob gets confused obviously and smells them because of the fact that they smell so bad obviously my favorite thing is he goes well that was nice and weird (laughs) Uh, (laughs) he is also suspicious because he thinks that rosalie did it and he assumes that they are girls clothes my favorite thing is that he says bet she'd love to see the look on my human face as i stood there naked holding a sundress which amazing picture very good yes Yes, very good. He goes out into the cover of the trees, changes, and he thinks that they're Emmett's clothes. They don't really fit, but they're good enough. Goes into the house, and everything has changed again in the matter of, like, ten minutes. (laughs) Every time that they do this, it's supposed to be, like, a day's change, but it's not. It's just been, like, ten minutes. (laughs) It's been half an hour. (laughs) Yep, exactly. And everyone's different now. Yep, exactly. So wild. At this point, Bella is back on the couch, and she's in a blanket burrito, which, mood. Yeah, same, actually. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Literally same. (laughs) Literally me right now. (laughs) She's super excited to see Jacob, which, it's been 10 minutes, Bells. Yeah, fucking calm down. (laughs) No object permanence when you're pregnant, apparently. (laughs) I guess not. Which is fine. Jacob goes in to report everything to Edward, 
But he's like, yeah, I heard it all, which is wild. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, I guess. Jacob says that they'd been a good three miles out. And so Jacob's like, how did you even <laughs> do that? <laughs> but apparently Edward says that I'm hearing you more clearly. What? We have a bond now. What? And it's like, gross. <laughs> Get a room, guys. Yeah, you guys are gross. How do you guys Stop just it. fucking kiss each other, okay? <laughs> Instead of fighting over <laughs> Bella, all right? Yeah, what is all of that projection for? Just let us know how you really feel. Let us know in the comments down below. <laughs> oh, God. So now Bella's back to just telling Jacob to please get some sleep. <laughs> She's just really on this Jacob needs sleep campaign. Yep. Uh, Rosalie's back to just really wanting to fight Jacob, <laughs> which, <laughs> I mean, listen, I love the consistency. Yeah. It's great, though, because Jacob's having none of it and is telling blonde jokes to Rosalie, <laughs> which, I mean, listen, I love that you two are just fighting each other, which is great. They're the worst to each other, but, I mean, he's used to having sisters, so it's fine. That's fair, yeah. So during all of this, Jacob immediately just like walks in and then walks out like he's some sim that got his actions deleted which is very confusing <laughs> to read but it's fine during all this edward follows him out and is talking about what he had said earlier about feeling like he has no home because that was one of the things that had been mentioned during the conversation with jared yeah it was sort of important, but not really. We may have this conversation now. Um, <laughs> but Edward is talking to him about it. And he brings up that Esme is super concerned about this. Yeah. It's something that, especially because the pack is here and worrying about all of the, the Collins and Bella's safety, Esme is not okay with the fact that they are putting all of their time and effort through this. And mm -hmm. she wants to do everything that she can to make it easier on them. So Jacob is like a vampire mother hen. Weird, but okay. <laughs> so what Edward says is that they have a normal human food here, of course, to keep up appearances. And he says that Leah's welcomed anything she'd like. All of them are. And Jacob is just like with squinty eyes, like, I'll pass that along. So um, <laughs> like, okay. all right, very suspect. <laughs> he says that as far as the clothes, anything that they want is there because the fact that Alice doesn't let them wear anything twice. But he says that Leah is suspect to that as well because the fact that she doesn't really like bloodsucker cast-offs. <laughs> but Edward says that they're welcome to anything as far as transportation and physical objects, anything that, that they like. Which you can tell that Bella being in physical danger has made him a lot more accommodating. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you imagine like Twilight book Edward doing this... <laughs> He'd, he'd rather die, yeah. I think, uh -huh. than do this. For sure. But anyway, I just think that it's super cute that Esme is very torn up about all of this. Yeah. Mama bird in yeah, action. Yeah, exactly. Very cute. So anyway, after all of this, they are having all of this conversation and then they hear this cry from inside. So again, Jacob goes about back inside the house and he says that he shuffles in like a zombie and bella is kind of huffled what whatever <laughs> bundled over whatever i mean that's a word right <laughs> yeah yeah Allie. i mean fuck off i can make it's, up words it's when a hufflepuff is like really stressed <laughs> i mean yeah i'll go with that Done. whatever Urban dictionary that yeah exactly so anyway what happened is Bella has gone down and broken her rib, <sighs> aka the thing. This fucking demon. Her. This fucking demon, baby. <laughs> yeah. Breaking her bones from the inside. Exactly. Here's the quote from her, though, because this is such a Virgo thing to be like, pretty sure it was a rib. Ow. Yep. Right there. And it's just like, oh girl, you just <laughs> broke your rib. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. Jacob is pissed. Edward is like spinning out of control because <laughs> there's nothing he can do. No. But the thing is, and this is what Jacob kind of 
surmises too is like so bella was stronger but the thing was too you can't starve one without starving the other and the healing worked just the same and so he's like fuck well like, shit. what do we do <laughs> <laughs> yep exactly Jacob kind of slumps down to the floor because he's exhausted and he doesn't really know what to do. Yeah. And Alice had been kind of hovering around at this point and she kind of comes down the stairs to kind of hover around Jacob too and asks him for a pillow. And he's like, what are you, why are all of you being so nice? Stop it. Like, I don't Shut understand. <laughs> I just want to sleep. <laughs> they talk about these headaches that she gets because of the fact that once Bella got pregnant, she couldn't see anything and it was like TV static. Mm. Anyway, once Jacob is around, she can kind of see a little bit clearer and it's just like nothing, which makes it easier for him to be around and she can breathe a little bit easier. AKA not breathe, which is great. (laughs) So Jacob falls asleep in seconds. And when he wakes up, he's dreaming about being thirsty. Um, AKA he just can't breathe because someone has put a pillow underneath him and he's not sure who did it. Now this is when things get great because he wakes up and Blondie is pissed because he's been snoring apparently and it sounds like a chainsaw, (laughs) which is great. Yeah, very good. Um, Yes, very good. Now, when he's actually able to get the pillow away from him, he smells bacon and cinnamon. Now, this is when we find out that Edward made cinnamon rolls. And who did he make cinnamon rolls, you ask? For what? He made them for Seth. My and I son, just... my shining joy. I love them. I love all of them. I just... I cry. My boy? My boys? <laughs> I love them. Who love I each love other? I love that friendship so much. Mm. Anyway, my favorite thing is Seth is living his best life, right? Because he's got his arm wrapped around Bella. Alice is wrapped around Seth. And Edward is living his best life because he's got someone to make food for, finally. <laughs> because all that Bella wants is eggs. And he's not able to show off his culinary talents. <laughs> And then Seth smiles and giddiness fall as soon as Jake sees him (laughs) because he's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I need to be at work (laughs) and not be happy. Fuck. Uh, Uh. (laughs) Which it's just, yeah, I love that because it just says that Seth took in my expression and hurried to explain. (laughs) And I just, that's so cute. My boys. Yeah, I love that so much. It's super cute. But yeah, so Jake slept all through the day and then all through the night, like me yesterday. Um, (laughs) Relatable content. Very relatable. Very cute. But I love that a lot. So Lee had been running patrol. Like, everything was fine. Jacob needed to sleep. So Seth was there taking care of everything, being a very good boy, doing his damnedest to make sure that he was on it. Very cute. All good things. (laughs) And I love that a lot. I just, Seth and Edward. (laughs) Ah. It's all good. Yes. So once he wakes up, he, as soon as he's getting ready to leave, Carlisle stops Jacob and is like, so this hunting thing, what do we do? Because is Sam going to like kill us? What are we going to (laughs) do? And so Jacob lets him know that they are going to be at war, like, anyway. So (laughs) it's better to just do their damn thing. Yeah. What Carlisle decides that they need to go in threes to hunt because of the fact that they need to be at their strongest for Bella anyway, so they can't just stop hunting. (laughs) Good things. Now, when Jacob gets ready to leave and um he tells seth that he needs to be ready by dusk (laughs) and he tells seth to stop using or to stop being a heating pad for bella (laughs) because he's he's been doing that this whole time very cute yeah and also just like super possessive because it's like I mean, Bella could probably use that. Yeah. But it's fine. Anyway, as he gets ready to leave, Esme, like, stops him and has a dish of food for him and a basket of clothes for Leah. And it's just like, here, please take all of these things. Just, like, let me be helpful, please. (laughs) Please, God. So, yeah, exactly. And (laughs) the thing about it is he's not actually going to 
use them and take them to Leah, he like tells Edward, like, don't tell her that I'm not going to actually use these. But because of the fact that she reminds him of his mom, he's like, well, damn it. I guess I'll actually sort of take these, I guess. Um, Yeah, I thought that that was cute. Yeah. So, and that's where the chapter ends. Boing, boing, boing. Yeah, cute and stuff. We did it. Yeah, we did it. Mm-hmm. So next week, chapter 15, TikTok, 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 <sighs> and chapter 16, <laughs> too much information alert. Yep. Uh, oh, it just wants yeah. to be over. <laughs> Agreed. But it will be soon. Woo. Jacob's stuff will be ending soon. Woo. Yeah. So we'll have 53 will be the last one with him. Oh, I thought you meant chapter 53. I was like, what? That's not <laughs> almost done at all. Psych. <laughs> you thought. Yep. You thought. I would have fucking murdered you. <laughs> like, what? Come Sorry. at me. I will. I'll come through this goddamn screen. <laughs> Fist out. Okay. <laughs> So, good news. We have lots of new iTunes reviews. Oh, 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 oh. Would you like to start this week? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Gabby Gibby for the five star rating. Thank you, Kendall Berg for the five star rating. Thank you, uh, Fatima J23 for the five star rating. Thank you, Mal12334 <laughs> for the five star rating. <laughs> And thanks AFS7 for the five-star rating. And also, it they formatted it as, like, the New York's Hottest Clubs from Saturday Night Live, and it's very good. So if you want to <laughs> read it, it's very good. Yeah, that's some good shit. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Love getting new iTunes reviews. We also, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, you go for it. <laughs> no, you were trying with your thoughts. Um, I stepped on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> Stop stepping on my toes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love talking. Um, okay, so patrons boy, boy. this week. Good stuff. Happy Thanksgiving. If you like it, we've got lots of them. Our $25 patron. <laughs> Wait, what kind of a segue was that? <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. If you like it, we got a lot of them here are patrons. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I just Don't cover me. I was going to say a thing about Thanksgiving. Okay, for go them. for it. No, please go. Please go. We got Rachel Swan, who gets all the good deals on Black Friday. Oh, hell yeah. We got Rachel Black, oh. who's one of our $10 patrons, who loves to get extra helping <laughs> of mashed this, potatoes. I love this improv exercise you're doing right now. Okay, you go next. No, fuck. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica Stanley, another to another patron who just, like, swims in that gravy. Holy shit. Okay, we got Katie Weber, who gets the best seat on the couch for the Macy's Day Parade. Oh, fuck. We got Jessica Hale, who just got upgraded to the adult table at Thanksgiving. Oh, damn. Um, and we got M. Zuli, who loves the spiked punch. Yeah, good. I don't know. Do people have spiked punch at Thanksgiving? Probably. If it's a fun one, sure. Damn. There was this article going around about having to pay, like, $30 for a table at Thanksgiving. And I was like, what the fuck? Sorry, what kind um, of dystopian future are we living in? I know. I agree. Anyway. Do we have a fan those. fiction, my dude? We do. Yeah, I tried to find an old one Whoa. this week. Yeah, this one was published on January 20th of 2006. And it is called Yoga, and it's by White Mask, Black Eyes. The summary is... You would think that the Collins and Bella would never do yoga, right? See what happens when they have to do a mandatory class. What troubles occur? Disclaimer, I do not own Twilight. It belongs to Stephanie Meyer. Boy, she rocks. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, God. It's a Friday. The last day of school right before a weekend. Nothing bad could happen. Not on a Friday. Unfortunately, that myth has to be broken. The Collins and Bella's day had just been dampened. Actually, their Saturday had just been ruined. Students, please report to the cafeteria for an announcement, squawked the speakers across the school. Bella looked confused while Edward was searching people's minds to see if they knew what was going on. 
When Belle and Edward reached the cafeteria, they went to sit with the rest of Cullen family at their table. Alice looked overly excited, and everyone else was waiting patiently to see what lame ugh, announcement needed to be said. Bella sat next to Alice and said, What is this announcement about Alice? Alice just shook her head and hissed next to Edward. Stay out of my head. Everyone then turned their attention to the podium because the principal had just come. He began with boring things like, Remember to take home flyers for some little hiking trip. Finally, he came to the next announcement. I called you all from class to announce that the next two weekends are going to have a yoga class. We have divided the school into those four days so that everyone has a chance to do yoga. We believe that this is a great thing to try other cultural forms. Yoga has a deep philosophy that is rooted down through many ages. So we have a yoga instructor who will come help you to experience this. Your name and class date is posted on the back wall, so go check it out. The colons raced at top-notch human speed to the back to see where they were placed. Edward dragged Bella with him so he could also see where she was placed. Fortunately, they were all placed in the same class together, even Bella. They were in the class on Saturday at 3 p.m. Edward was slightly upset because Mike was also in that class and Jessica was not placed in the same class with him. But new problems also arose. I don't have an outfit that is suitable for yoga, said a slightly nervous Bella. Who wouldn't be nervous when A, you just told a vampire that loves to shop that you need an outfit and B, you are horrible at balancing. End scene. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. That's what say in forks. <laughs> Get bit. Uh. Oh, hi there. Guess you stole Cody's mic and took over the end credits. This is an Earbud Media production. You can pitch a show at bit.ly slash earbud pitch. You can check out the network's Twitter at Earbud Media. And while you're doing that, why don't you follow us everywhere at Into the Twilight? Since you're doing that, why don't you just go ahead and check out our Patreon? It's patreon.com slash into the twilight. Just as little as a dollar a month, you can get some cool things like pins and books, help us do cool things like live streams. You can always help us out for free with reading and reviewing us on Apple Podcast. Our amazing artwork was done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at your ghost host 44. Our fantastic music was done by Eli Kraus, who you can find at krausfilms.com. The intro and outro of our podcast is done by KB Smith, who you can find at KB underscore Smith. You can find Cody everywhere online at Cody Captures, and you can find me now everywhere at Into Wild Places. You stayed until the end. Check you out. Good job. And we will check back with you next week. Bye. You've been listening to Earbud Media Production. Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Hey, Dan. Hey, what's up, John? I just wanted to uh, confirm that we were recording Monday. Yes. Uh, what are we recording for? Oh, it's our new podcast. Our podcast. The the, the Strange Little People one, Strange right? Little People, yeah. Yeah, the one on Earbud Media Productions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. You can listen to it. The one that we update every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, dude. When we have new guests all the time. Sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah, and we talk about current events and stuff. People should listen to it, right? Yeah. yeah it's really cool. I think people would like it. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but I, mean, I hope you would. Did you put out the ad yet? The uh, flyers? Y- yeah, I, I'm doing it right now, as we speak. No, you're sitting down. You're no, not... no, this, this is happening right now, as we speak. John, why did my hand just go through you? Oh my god. John. We'll talk about it next week.